Jim Curlin sitting at his desk with his computer and tablet next to him. Well, welcome everyone to the Beyond Vision Virtual Career Fair. Uh, my name is Jim Curlin. I'm the CEO of Beyond Vision and have been since 2007. Uh, my goal here today is to give you an overview of Beyond Vision, tell you a little bit about our, our culture, our philosophy, um, how we uh, treat our employees as partners. And um, so with that, uh, let me tell you first of all what Beyond Vision isn't. Uh, this is not your grandfather's sheltered workshop. We began as a sheltered workshop under the state of Wisconsin about 100 years ago. Uh, but for decades now, it's been uh, an independent 501c3 and we are not, again, a, a sheltered workshop. Um, we use the metaphor uh, that Beyond Vision is a runway. It's a place to take off, a place to land, and a place to take off in your career, if you will. And that taking off may take place here at Beyond Vision, getting a promotion uh, to any one of uh, uh, many positions, either in the hourly workforce or in the salary workforce. Uh, maybe my position someday is going to be filled by a person who's vision impaired or blind. Um, so that runway metaphor we think helps describe to the average person you know, our philosophy here. Uh, we follow a servant leadership philosophy of management. Uh, if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's, it's, uh, it's how we um, believe employees should be treated at all levels of the organization. Uh, we pay competitive wages to everyone, no matter uh, if you're an hourly role or a salary role or an executive role, whether you're visually impaired or typically sighted, it doesn't matter. We're paying everybody here a market competitive uh, compensation package. We offer an excellent benefit package. Uh, we're part of the state's uh, benefit uh, program as a legacy of when we used to be with the state of Wisconsin. We also offer a retirement program, uh, and these are really super premium programs. So, um, with regard to our, our culture, um, I'm wearing jeans today and a Beyond Vision shirt. Uh, you'll see a lot of people uh, dressed like this at Beyond Vision. Uh, so we're sort of a business casual um, uh, atmosphere. I will wear a tie uh, from time to time if I'm hosting a customer or uh, in, in our state capital talking to legislators or things like that. But we're generally a fairly casual um, environment. Um, we like to have fun uh, here at Beyond Vision. While we work hard, uh, we also like to have fun. Um, and that's actually one of our values in our, our value statement. Our uh, vision statement at Beyond Vision is enriching the lives of Americans who are blind through the dignity of work valued by customers and the community. And we really place that mission statement, that vision statement, uh, in front of all decisions that we make here. If we, if we put the mission first in all the decisions we make, uh, then we're probably making the right decision 99% of the time. Um, we focus on blind employment. Uh, we always have. Our mission has always been to uh, provide jobs and career paths to people who, are, um, who have vision loss and are legally blind. Um, and we do that because, as you know, this is a very disenfranchised segment of, of uh, the population and Wisconsinites are no different. There's roughly 70% uh, non-employment of pe people, blind, uh, working age adults uh, in this state, just as there is uh, countrywide. So we're all about jobs, we're all about careers, and we're all about um, inclusion. Uh, and, and uh, the careers that we offer. Uh, we do have people uh, sighted and blind working side by side throughout the organization. Just to give you some statistics about Beyond Vision, we're roughly a $45 million operation um, and our population of, of employees is about 51% of people who are legally blind. So quite a nice mixture as you see. Um, we are in the process of building a new uh, campus. We call it the Visibility Center. Uh, we've been occupying this state-owned facility for uh, quite a few years. Uh, and the good news is we've outgrown it. And so it's, it's, uh, it's time for us to move on. We're building, uh, we purchased a 130,000 square foot facility. It was a former Sam's Club. We're building out offices inside 
and turning the majority of the parking lot into green space. Um, it's going to be a very cool facility because it's going to feature um, things like a uh, fully accessible fitness center. Uh, we're going to have a dog grooming facility for people to be able to groom their, their dogs or, or kennel their dogs as they see fit. Uh, we're going to have, as I mentioned, outside we're turning the majority of the parking lot into green space. That's going to feature a walking trail where people, uh, our employees uh, or neighbors, can have a nice place to walk and enjoy the outside. Uh, there'll be a dog run for people to be able to relieve their uh, uh, guide dogs and, and so forth. So that, that program is in process as we speak and about a year from now we should be moving in to the facility. We've actually moved some of our production there, but we'll be moving into the office spaces about a year from now. Um, so what I think we'd like to do now is transition and show you around the, the facility a, a bit, uh, introduce you to some of our employees and give you a sense for what that looks like. Stacy sitting in her cubicle with her guide dog Oneida. Okay, so uh, the first person I'd like to introduce you to is Stacy. Uh, she's our customer service professional here, and this is her sidekick, Renita. And uh, so take it away, Stacy. Tell us what you do here. All right, well, thank you, Jim. Um, as Jim said, I am the customer service representative here at Beyond Vision. Um, I handle basically any orders that come in from both our manufacturing lines and our government lines of products, make sure everything is set to go in terms of pricing, etc. for the customers before the order goes on to be processed for production. I also do a lot of research for customers. Customers may reach out to me and say, oh, could you give me an estimated chip date? Can you give me an invoice? I need tracking. I received too much product. I didn't receive enough product. So I kind of do the gamut of all of those things uh, in one. So really important role here at Beyond Vision because our customers um, and treating our customers uh, really well is really an important aspect of what we do because they give us more more work to do, more services to provide them. That creates more jobs and the wheels on the bus go round and round. And Stacy's sort of our, our face to the customer, so it's a really, really important role. Thanks, Stacy. Absolutely. Thanks, Oneida. Nick sitting behind his desk in his office decorated with plants and fun photos. So uh, another person I'd like to introduce you to is Nick Chapluski. He's our uh, fund development professional here at Beyond Vision. And so Nick, tell them uh, who you are and what you do here. Yeah, so as Jim mentioned, my name is Nick. Uh, I've been here for about eight years now, uh, and I'm the fundraising, fund development lead. So I uh, coordinate all of our fundraising efforts. Uh, Beyond Vision is a not-for-profit, so we do fundraising along with um, the business side of things. Uh, so I approach potential donors uh, to help raise money to buy adaptive technology that helps other people do their job better. Um, we also use some fundraising dollars to go towards job training, job skills development and training. Um, yeah, so it's a, a rough summary of, of what I do here. Also plan some events uh, and help get the word out about Beyond Vision. Yeah. Do you mind talking about your, your vision? Yeah, so uh, I have a condition called Stargardt's. Uh, when what that is is a form of macular degeneration. Uh, so uh, when I was a teenager, uh, it started to take hold. So I actually have no central vision. Uh, I rely on my peripherals. Uh, and I use certain adaptive technologies uh, on my computer, as well as I have a CCTV magnifier here to help blow things up and magnify. Um, whatever it is, if I need to read some documents. Um, and one of the things I love about Beyond Vision is they work with me, whatever my personal needs are, they help fit uh, and tailor whatever the adaptive tech I need is and help me do my job. Yeah, and the cool part about what you do is the, the fund development that you do uh, helps us to be able to afford to pay for all the accessibility needs uh, for all the different individuals that we have here. And um, so it's a really important aspect of what we do here at Beyond Vision. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Nick. Tracy sitting in his office next to his computer, office supplies, and product boxes in the background. Another one of the professionals I'd like to introduce you to here at Beyond Vision is Tracy. Uh, he's part of our accounts payable um, 
uh, finance division. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tracy, tell them who you are, how long you've been here, and what you do. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Tracy Dent, and I am the accounts payable clerk here at Beyond Vision. And basically, I process all the invoices and everything for for the for the organization. Um, I've been here over a year now, and it, this is a wonderful place to work. Uh, I encourage you to, you know, fill out the application and go through the process. Uh, and if you, you know, be accepted here, this will be a longevity uh, place to uh, to work. You yeah. know, and um, I'm excited uh, every day to come to work. So. Yeah. And I know you're typically cited, Tracy, but isn't it? I think I've got this right. Isn't your brother visually impaired? Yes, yes. My brother is um, completely blind mm -hmm. and everything, and you know, and it's an experience for 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 me and him, you know, to go through this journey and everything. And that's one of the things I like about Beyond Vision because they hire uh, vision impaired people. To you know, give you know, give them a self worth uh, opportunity, and like I said, I can't express enough uh, how great um, this place is to work for. Yeah, thanks a lot. Sure, appreciate it. Jeff showcasing a 3D printed fixture that allows people who are blind and visually impaired to assemble complicated products. All right, so now we're moving into the production area, and I'd like to introduce you to Jeff Ducro. He's our uh, processing engineer. Um, we have a 3D printer. From the use of it, we've developed this fixture that allows us to assemble this product uh, repeatably and, and result good quality. Yeah, so Jeff is a very creative guy. Uh, we come up with these engineered solutions for many of the processes that we have out here in our assembly and packaging area. And this is just one example. So we have Jeff would come up with the concept, he'd work with the engineer to design the fixture, and then we transfer that uh, information via CAD, computer-aided design, to our 3D printer. We print up the, uh, the fixture, and that helps the person, whether they're sighted or totally blind, be able to put together a, a pretty complicated assembly like this. Uh, very efficiently and with excellent quality every time. And so Jeff is a really creative guy. He helps, he helps us come up with these kind of solutions all over the shop. So. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Mike Smith operating machine in Beyond Vision's machine shop, which features tactile wayfinding throughout the whole shop and audible display on all machines. Hey, so now we're moving to a different part of our production uh, manufacturing facility. Uh, and I'd like to introduce you. We're now in the machine shop. And we're handing the CNC machine, which stands for Computer Numerical Control. So, uh, and this is Mike Smith. He's one of our machine shop operators, and he's working on a part. Oh, uh, well, you tell him what you're doing, Mike. Oshkosh. Oshkosh. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a part for Oshkosh that we that we that we put in the, in the machine that we we drill. In. Whatever else needed, and, um, and then we then we the burn and then we do whatever else. Needed. Yeah, so I think this part is used in the um, uh, what's called the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, which is made by Oshkosh Truck Corporation, and this is just one of the many machines that Mike is uh, trained in to operate. There's different machines here that do different uh, uh, processes, and Mike can operate them all. Appreciate your time, Mike. How long have you been here? Uh, as far as y'all are concerned, 17 years. 17 years. Well, we appreciate your help, man. We're, we're doing something else in that machine that we're running that would be, y'all should be taking off. It, it's, a, it's a hex piece. Okay. I have no idea who, who we're doing. So it's pretty cool. You're operating two machines at yes. one time, right? So right. while that machine is is uh, going through its process, Mike comes over here and unloads and loads this machine, closes the door, it starts its program, Mike goes back across the aisleway and reloads that machine. So it's very efficient operation. And oh, by the way, we have 100% quality on-time delivery here at Beyond Vision's machine shop. So appreciate your time, Mike. All right, you yeah. Julius sitting at his assembly and packaging station that is adapted to his vision loss needs. All right, so this is another section of our assembly and packaging area where we do um, 
aftermarket packaging of, of kits for various companies like Brickson Stratton and Harley Davidson and many others. And this is Julius Perez. He works out here in our assembly area. And uh, Julius, tell him a little about yourself and what you do here. And okay, well, I am a out of Baker. Uh, my, my journey started the day I walked into this building. Since then, it's been eight years. Um, I have my own apartment. Uh, I live a very pretty, a pretty, uh, sad, I'm very satisfied with my life. Uh, I'm very involved in my church, in my neighborhood, have lots of friends. Uh, my life is, uh, I, I would say it's even more normal now than it was back then. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's why, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of willing to talk about Beyond Vision because I think it is a job, you're employed here, um, it's not a workshop, there's expectations laid on you, but beyond that, uh, there's so much, so many other ways this company enriches your life. Uh, and that's really, to me, the bigger message. Although we don't need employees and we need, you know, people to come uh, and put the best foot forward, uh, the, uh, the benefit will go way past uh, whatever your wages are. Jim sitting at his desk in his office. So another part of uh, the Beyond Vision um, uh, that I really can't show you because they're remote operations, uh, there's two other parts actually. Our contact center, which is uh, down, down the street, and I believe we're going to give you a little bit of a, a separate tour of that. Uh, and also we operate uh, what we call BSCs, or base supply centers. Those are um, retail and distribution centers that are located on military installations in as far away as California. We also have one in uh, Detroit, Michigan. We have one in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we have one at Scott Air Force Base is one of our bigger base supply centers. Uh, and another one in Columbus, Ohio. And I, I think I'm leaving one or two out. But uh, the point is that we operate those distribution centers remotely. Uh, we have uh, both blind and sighted uh, counterparts working within those operations. And uh, we also have some remote employees working uh, within our call center operations uh, that, are, that are working out of their home. Uh, it's another aspect of, of the types of career paths that we offer here at Beyond Vision. Rob Bittner, VP of Human Resources, giving a tour of Beyond Vision's call center. The call center moved into this building in 2016 and it was created specifically for the call center. This is kind of our lunch area, uh, break room area, uh, where uh, our folks um, you know, gather for uh, breaks and lunches and, and meetings and so forth. Uh, in addition to the call center working out of here, we also have some other departments that work out of this building. Uh, Tony Crapo, who works in IT, is over in the corner. Uh, Sarah uh, Heeson isn't in yet, but uh, Again, she works out of here when she was doing uh, the talent acquisition work, and now in her new role is business development. Uh, Bill King, uh, again, is a jack of all trades throughout the organization, helping with uh, data, um, some of our data work for the call center, uh, in addition to IT. Next to him is Israel. Uh, Israel is currently taking a, a class or NIV called Promote. Uh, so he's, he's pretty, been pretty heads down uh, the last week and a half, and he's got two more weeks to go. We'll come in this area. Uh, Mary LaPointe is one of our team leads. Uh, and actually, Mary is monitoring what's going on with the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. Um, through this, she can not only monitor the agents that are here on the facility, but we also have three remote agents uh, for Beyond Vision that are working on this program. Uh, and uh, one, uh, Kenneth Chi, works out, out of Appleton. Steve Heeson uh, actually works out of, um, out of his house in Janesville. Plus, we work with a lot of other nonprofits uh, that are remote, but we're able to monitor um, everything here through TCN, our software program. So, say hi, Mary. Hi. <laughs> um, across from Mary is Guadalupe, who's one of our uh, agents. She's been with us for a while. Um, we have Jeff Jay. Say hi, Jim. Hi, good yeah. morning. Yep, and then over in the corner is Alex, one of our newer agents, um, who joined us last fall and just came out of the payroll um, this past month. So, uh, Delana Williams usually sits here. She's another one of our team leads. Uh, Delana continues to work remote. 
Um, the other remote uh, agent that we have, we have working us is Michelle Mills, who splits her time between uh, working at the BSC at Great Lakes, but then also being a remote contact center agent. And the gentleman down here is Steve Gasteright. Uh, Steve sounds like he's on a pandemic unemployment assistance call. Um, and again, Steve's been with us. We call him the founding father of the, the call center because uh, he was the first employee hired on when we created this business unit over 10 years ago. I'm just going to take you down. You might be able to see along the wall we have some pictures. Um, and maybe what I can do, I can talk to Diana and see if we can get those pictures sent out. But when we built this space, we had found those pictures in our archives. And it gives some history on uh, what we have been doing since 1903. I believe that gentleman there is actually working on a loom, um, doing uh, some making a, um, a rug, um, a horsehair rug uh, via a loom. Uh, and uh, so it's pretty cool that when we built this space, we were able to put up some of our history. So uh, there is my office uh, where I spend most of my time. And just to give you guys an idea, uh, before we rebuilt this space, the whole building looked like this. It was a big open shop area. And right now uh, we use this for access inventory, uh, storage, and so forth. But before we built the call center, the whole building was vacant. Uh, and looked like this. And we had used it prior, prior um, primarily in the, in the 90s when we were doing a lot more work for Briggs & Stratton. Uh, but when they moved a lot of their business down south, uh, they took some of that work with them. And this building stayed abandoned for a long time until 2016 when we created this call center space. So, uh, so thanks for going on the tour with me. Uh, appreciate all the work that everyone does out there. And again, if you ever have any more questions about the contact center, feel free to contact me or call any of our agents. Thanks. Jim's sitting at his desk in his office. So that's it. Hopefully that gives you a little sense of what Beyond Vision is like and the career opportunities that are available here. If you'd like to get additional information, uh, I'm sure that information will be given to you on how to, how to contact us and find out additional information about opportunities available specifically now or in the future. And thanks for taking part in this uh, virtual career fair.